I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Photo mosaics with Inkscape. Can it be done? Yes. Is Inkscape the best program to do it? No. Should you use Inkscape to make these? No. But we're going to do it anyway. I'll show you how you can do step by step how to make this one here with this woman. These are examples I did to get the technique down. The problem is it's too intensive on the computer and I was just crashing out. I don't think it's Inkscape's fault, but in researching it, I was able to get it down and some of the steps have tools and techniques you might want to use for other projects. So if you want to see how this is done, you can follow along. The idea came from when I did the flow text tutorial with the cat image here. Graph guy put in the comments, how about the version where the cat image is composed of thousands of smaller photos, either of the cat or of other photos seen that yes I thought that was a great suggestion and I went about experimenting the real photo mosaics from the 90s if you remember I actually have the book from back in the day this is uh, they had a Darth Vader but every single individual image was actually from the movie Empire Strikes Back what we'll do today is we'll take a smaller set of images and I'll show you how to arrange them so you get the larger image built up of your source photos because the issue with making these is memory space and computing power I'm going to actually open up a new Inkscape window this this is the A4 template. We're not going to use this actual frame here, but it is good for a visual reference to give you a sense of scale. If you go up to this paper and the wrench, that's the document properties, you want to go to format A4. And if it's a future or older version of Inkscape, you can also find this under file document properties. Now, before I bring in the actual source images, these are from my wife and I when we were first when we were dating and then our honeymoon. This is not my wife. This is going to be the overarching top image. If I bring them in as is, they're going to be too big. And I wanted to make this tutorial pure and not have to make you resize all of these outside of Inkscape. So before we bring them in, hit this wrench and the screwdriver. This is global Inkscape preferences. You want to look for imported images and down here, the defaults, they're going to bring them in at 96 DPI. Let's change that to 24. I know that's a scary number, but these little source images are going to be so small in the end. The 24 DPI works just fine. Default import resolution override file resolution. Click on that also. And just in case you've messed around with these in the past, under import, the first box, make sure that's selected. Ask about linking and scaling when importing. And remember, sometimes I get comments, I don't like when you change defaults in Inkscape, but that's what the tools are here for. You can always come back when you're done with this project. Just hit your global preferences and put it back to 96. All right, now we can bring these images in and they'll be easier to work with. I've got them all selected here. I will drag them onto the canvas. Here's the important pop-up I was talking about. Image import type embed image DPI default import resolution. That's the number we just changed, 24 DPI. I'll hit okay. It's gonna think for a second. Oh, here is my wife's earring. <laughs> some of her hair Let's zoom out all 24 of the source images are stacked on top of each other let's select all of them by clicking and dragging over the entire stack I'm going to show you how to arrange these using the align and distribute menu first I'll just scale it down if I hold shift and control they'll all scale together you see that little tiny white box that is the original A4 template that's what I was talking about we now know the scale we're working with grab them all again just by selecting everything. Go up here to your align and distribute menu. Looks like this bar graph on the side. If your toolbars look really different, you can also go to object, align and distribute. What we want is actually on grid. So the first tab is align, then go to grid. For some reason, if you type in the numbers manually for rows, let's say I put in three, it gets jumbled up. Now it says 31, 24. It seems to do better by using the plus minuses. So I want two rows of 12. If I hit the plus once, it automatically does that. Then down here for set spacing, you wanna be at zero X and zero Y. And down here it says arrange. And you're gonna say, well, they're all all the wrong size that's true but that's the next trick we can do <laughs> look at these pictures I did make sure to pick all the photos being in the horizontal setting I think they're four by six or something like that so I'm gonna choose one of them this one right here then if I right click I can go to copy we're not gonna paste that image instead I'm going to select everything and with them all selected, go to edit under paste size go to paste size separately 
hit that. And it uses the height and width from the copied image and paste the actual size on everything else. Since they're all still selected, I can go back to my align and distribute menu. On grid, I haven't changed anything. If I hit arrange one more time, it slides them back into place. I'll zoom out a touch more. What I'm using here for this demonstration is only 24 images, but ideally I would have more pictures from these trips. I'll show you one hack to at least double your numbers easily. I'll select them all one more time, control D to duplicate it, and I'll drag the new duplicated 24 down. Here's a hidden gem on the Align and Distribute menu. Go over to the Align tab, and if you look down to Rearrange, if you go down to the second from the right, that is the random rearrangement. Hit that once, and you'll see it just shakes them up for you. They're all still selected again. I go back to Grid, Arrange, and you see that? It just sorted them all for me, and I can bring this 24 up to the first 24. Now we're working with 48, which will be a little bit better when we repeat this over and over. You see this thing over here, this magnet with the lightning bolt? That is snapping. Click on that because this will help as I drag it forward. It will lock it into place so it matches up perfectly. Now we can take a look. I don't want to have any that are exactly the same next to each other or any type of strange things. You could always select one of them and move it over, but this looks fine for now. And we've come to the big workaround. Select them all. And we don't want Inkscape to treat these as a group of 24 anymore. We want Inkscape to treat them as one block. And you can do that by going to edit, make a bitmap copy. But before you click make a bitmap copy, let's go back to our global preferences. We're back under imported images. We want the resolution for bitmap copy. We want to dumb that down from 96 all the way down to 30. X out of that. Everything is still selected. Go up to edit, make a bitmap copy. This might spin for a couple minutes. This could be like the most critical point. If it crashes, we'll do it over. Okay, there it went. Now I can drag the top one down. I know this one that I just dragged is the bitmap copy because if I click on one of the original images, it will still select just the one. But if I click down here, the whole thing is one unit. To save space, I'm going to now delete the originals. That was the hardest part, you guys. We're kind of home free now. This is a much lighter thing to use. I'll now just scale this down again using our A4 just as a reference. When I was playing around with ideas on how to do this, first I was thinking we could tile this out or we could just cut and paste and line them all up. But I think the easiest way to do it would be to make this a pattern. And Inkscape lets you do that with one simple click. I've got it selected here. We'll go to Object pattern, object to pattern. And you say, well, what just happened? I'll show you. If you take a new rectangle, I can see the fill of the rectangle is partially transparent. So I opened up the fill and stroke menu. It's this paintbrush thing in the corner to get fill and stroke or go to object fill and stroke. Sure enough, down here opacity, we'll take it to 100. And because we made this block of images into a pattern, we can fill this if we're on the fill tab on fill and stroke. Go over to this one right here, this checkerboard says pattern, hit it once. And there it is, it's inside, but it's not oriented properly. You've got this choppy dialogue, use the node tool. So go to node tool, zoom out far enough to find a square and a circle. It's over here for some reason. If you move the black X, you see that it changes where the pattern is showing up. I'm moving the pattern inside of the shape. And that's fine. But what we want, we want to scale it down even smaller internally. And that's what this square is for. When you hover over it, it turns red. Hold shift and control. That's going to lock in the proportion and drag it diagonally towards your X. You see what's happening? Now it's making our little tiny pattern really fill in. You can see the deficiency of only having 48 source images. I see visually this line here, this line here. But when you zoom in, it gets a little bit more varied. The main image overlay will also help to hide some of the repetitiveness. If you're a stickler and you don't like having this slice of an image or this one cut in half, you can grab either of these squares and change the actual shape ever so slightly, just a little bit cleaner. And we're ready for the main image. Before I drag it onto the canvas, 
We do need to go fix those global preferences. So I'll hit edit global preferences. We'll change the default import resolution back to what it was originally, 96. I don't wanna override. And while we're here, resolution for the bitmap copy, that was supposed to be 96. Everything's back to the way it was. You won't come back in a different project and wonder what's going on. I should mention that while all of these images I took or my wife took, this main image is from pexels.com. So thank you, Pexels. Let's drag her onto to the canvas. Here's the pop-up box. Let's go back to what it's supposed to be, image DPI from file. Playing around with the layering, I found four layers work pretty well. To keep it super simple to follow along, go to these stacks here, the view objects, click on that. You can also go to layer, layers and objects. And I should just have two, why do I have three? Oh, there it is. It's this original bitmap. We can delete that. And now we can keep track of things and do the effect. I'll take the woman and I'll go back to my fill and stroke menu. Just for now, I'm going to make it so I can see through her. I just hit 58 randomly. I want to see what part will be built up by these images. So I'm going to hold shift and control and minimize my source images. This is just preference now. I do want to have it so only a portion is this blank area up here. I want most of it to be filled by her. Let's zoom in. Here's a problem with this method. I've got this darker stripe coming down, so I'm going to go to my layers menu, and if I click on the image, let's move her so this mountain ridge here lines up with the lips. It's gonna blend in, but it's kind of fun to see what matches up naturally. I'll click on the main image. I can see on my layers and objects, image is selected, and I can do hierarchy here, these books here, and send it to the bottom, or you can also, with these two little hierarchy things, send them up and down. And here we go. Here is how to make it work. I have the main image selected. I'll go back to fill and stroke menu. Let's take this down to 36 on the transparency. Why? Because in experimenting for this particular main image, it works best. But if you're doing a different project with different images, you can play around with it. Go back to my layers and objects. I'll change over to rectangle 1265. You can double click and name this source image is one. Go back to fill and stroke. I want this to be full opacity, but for blend mode, go down to overlay. Let's go back to layers and objects. I want another image, so I click on the image. Right click in the pop-up, choose duplicate. That looks a little better already. And it's going to naturally put that on the top. So you have your hierarchy here. This is the new, change it to top image, bottom image. Why not? For the top image, we want this to be also overlay. Go back to fill and stroke menu. Opacity will make it full. The blend mode overlay. That's pretty good, almost there. I have one more layer to do to show you. Back to layers and objects. This time I'll take my source images, right click, duplicate. That puts it on top. Now it looks like a mess. This one will go to fill and stroke and change the opacity all the way down to 17. I do like that, but I did find it translates better. That looks pretty cool. It translates better. Experiment with this. I'm going to change the blend mode to darken and it just mutes it a little bit more. I'm trying to make the effect like this where uh, my wife is in the eye there. I want the viewer to see all the images, but then if you look again, you see the main image. Darken achieves that effect a little bit better. And there she is. That is it. I would not recommend this. I, I wouldn't do it. There's I would use Photoshop or Affinity Photo or anything, but it is fun to do. I appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and see you next time.